Hi, let's try to do the IPv4 network subnetting for this part C network. So again, before we begin, we notice in the question we are given the network address 192.168.10.0/24. So we are going to apply subnetting to this network. So before we begin, we notice the uh, actually three routers in this network R1 R2 and R3 okay so what we need to do is we are going to find out the number of subnets so in this case let's draw a purple bubble over here to represent the first subnet the another bubble in green for the second subnet the third bubble in yellow for the third subnet the fourth bubble in red for the fourth subnet the fifth bubble in blue for the fifth subnet and the last bubble okay we use purple again for the last subnet so in this question we actually require a total of one two three four five six minimum of six subnets so let's write that down in the question over here we need a total of six subnets at least for this network okay so let's highlight the network address as well in this case so next we're going to answer the question on how many bits are we going to borrow in order to create the number of subnets okay so in order to create the number of subnets we notice that we have a total of six subnets needed okay we need to have a total of six subnets so let's try to use the formula we have to determine the number of bits required so the formula we have noticed is actually 2 to the power of n okay where n is the number of subnet bits okay so let's try to see how we can get total of six subnets so in this case uh, if we let 2 to the power of 1 we will get 2 so we can only support two subnets in this case if we have only one subnet bit which is not enough okay this is less than 6 so let's continue if we have 2 to the power of 2 which is equals to 4 again it is still not enough because it is less than the 6 subnets that we need so let's try 2 to the power of 3 okay so 2 to the power of 3 is 8 which is greater than 6 subnets so definitely we can use the n equals to 3 where this number 3 subnet bits in this case so the number of subnet bits for this question is actually 3 okay so let's try to find the answer for the next part C how many whole usable host addresses we can have per subnet in this addressing scheme so in this case let's try to see the number of usable host addresses so we now know that we can use 3 subnet bits for the IP v4 address so in this case we know our subnet mask is actually equals to 255.255.255.255 what is the last number we're not sure so let's break this down again into the separate binary bits okay so we know that we are going to borrow three subnet bits so let's represent them by the n in blue and we represent the rest of the bits in red for hosts okay so now we know that we can actually have total of five bits for the hosts okay so how do we know how many subnets how many hosts we can support for this network to find out the number of usable host address for this network we need to use the formula 
2 to the power of 2 to the power of h minus 2 okay in this case h is actually equals to 5 5 bits for hosts so let's put this into the formula 2 to the power of 5 minus 2 is equals to 32 minus 2 which is equals to 30 so this is the total number of usable hosts per subnet so let's put this down in the question over here so number usable host address per subnet is actually 30 okay so let's proceed to answer the next part of the question where the number of subnet mass in this case what is the subnet mass for this dotted decimal format so let's go back to the table over here so we know that this is our subnet mask and we going to represent the network bits by one in binary and the host bit we are going to represent by zero so this is the binary equivalent for the last octet so how are we going to get the decimal equivalent for this octet over here what we're going to do is we are going to represent the first one by 128 we're going to represent the second one by 64 we're going to represent the third one by 32 so the binary ver the decimal version of this binary number is actually we're going to add up all this we're going to get 128 plus 64 plus 32 and we're going to get 2, 2, 4. Okay, so the answer is 2, 2, 4. So the final subnet mass for our this question over here is actually subnet mass is actually 255, 0.255, 0.255, 0.224. So this is our subnet mask for this question. Let's write that down. 255 2 to 4. Okay. So let's try to find the last question, the last answer for the last question. How many subnets are available for future use? So in this case, we notice that we only need six subnets, but we are actually planning for a total of eight subnets in this case okay so since we are planning for a total of eight subnets we are going to use only six subnets okay so we actually have a extra of two two remaining extra okay two remaining extra networks that we are not going to use so in this case the answer is two for the last part future use two subnets available okay so given this information already we can actually populate the addressing table over here so let's proceed with the first address given 192.168.10.0 so in this case this is the network address we're going to put this in the subnet address in this case 0 0.0 okay so the first usable host address will be 192.168.10.1 okay the last usable host address is actually 192.168.10.1 okay so to do this let's go on top and look at our question over here the number of usable host address per subnet is 30 so the address over here is actually 30 okay and the broadcast address will be 192.168.10.31 so that is the address for the first subnet 0 we can proceed to do the next for the subnet 1 it will be the 192.168.10.32 first usable host address 10.33 last usable host address will be 192.168.10.1 so in this case we notice that the address over here is 32 and we are going to have a total of 30 subnet addresses so in this case this is actually 62 okay and the broadcast address will be 
0.63 so that is the addressing for the subnet 1 so we can continue to proceed for the rest of the subnets so for this one will be 192.68.10.64 and first usable host address will be 10.65 last usable host address will be uh, 64 plus 30 in this case why 30? Because we have a total of 30 usable host address per subnet. So in this case, the answer will be 94. Okay, so in this case, the last usable host address is 94. Okay, and we can continue for broadcast address will be 10.95. Subnet 3, 192.168.10.96. First usable host address 10.97. The last usable host address will be 96 plus 30. Okay, so in this case it will be 126. So that will be 126 over here. 126. And this will be 127. Uh, subnet 4, 128. Network address, first usable host address is 129.2. What's the next address? Is 128 plus 30, which will be 158. Okay, so in this case, we have a total of uh, 158. And the last broadcast address will be 159, and so on continue for 160 the first usable host address will be 161 and the next uh, last usable host address will be 160 plus 30 which will be 190 okay so in this case the answer will be 190 and broadcast address will be 191 for the address for subnet 6 will be 192 to 193 10.193 to the last usable host address will be in this case 192 plus 30 which will be 1 2 2 2 2 2 this is 223 and the last address coming up will be 224 for the subnet address this will be 225 the last usable host address will be 254 and this will be 255 so this is the address for the whole of the network over here okay after we have completed the IP addressing table for this network we can proceed to fill up the addresses for the network devices in step 3 so what we need to do is we will look at the first device R1 okay for R1 gigabit Ethernet 01 so assuming we have this network over here okay so let's try to represent this network by this segment over here and we're going to copy this and we're going to copy this paste over here for easy reference okay so what we need to do is we're going to draw the network subnet for this network again so let's draw the bubble in this case we have a total of one network over here the next network is actually this network over here in green the third network let's represent it by this red color bubble over here the fourth network let's represent it by the orange bubble over here 
the fifth network represented by this purple bubble over here and the last network represented by this gray bubble over here so we have this total of six networks over here let's label them by the subnet number so for example we call this subnet 0 we call this the subnet 1 let's call this a subnet 2 let's call this subnet 3 we call this subnet 4 1, 2, three. oops and this is a uh, subnet 5 okay so we have total of 6 subnets subnet 0 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 okay so let's try to represent the addresses for the interface in these subnets so what we need to do is we are going to look at the table over here before we can actually subnet the addresses so let's use the first subnet 0 for the subnet 0 bubble over here okay so notice that for the first r1 gigabit 0 1 over here we actually inside the subnet 0 so let's ad assign any addresses within the subnet 0 for this gigabit Ethernet 0 1 okay so let's take a look at the subnet 0 over here we have the address range between 192.168.10.1 to 192.168.10.30 so let's assign any addresses within this assigned range over here so let's give it 192.168.10.1 let's say any addresses okay and some name marks will be 255 255.255.224 okay so let's continue to look at the next interface for r1 serial ethernet 000 okay so r1 let's take a look at the diagram over here r1 000 is in subnet 1 so let's take a look at our subnet 1 in this case our subnet 1 is at this portion over here okay so the available address we can assign is actually within this range 33 to 62 so let's maybe we can assign the addresses for this 0001192.168.10.33 any addresses within the range and the subnet mask will be okay after we have filled in the IP address for the 000 interface for R1 let's continue to fill up the address for 0001 for R1 okay so looking at the diagram over here for R1 0001 falls onto subnet 3 okay so for subnet 3 we look at the table we have drawn earlier so for subnet 3 the addresses are in this range and the addresses we can allocate for the 0001 interface is actually any addresses within this range over here so let's use the 10.97 address for the 0001 in this case is 192.168.10.97 okay and the subnet mask will still be the same okay so let's proceed to fill up the addresses for r2 so let's examine r2 in this case r2 is over here the first interface we are going to allocate is gigabit ethernet 01 r2 so g01 of r2 is within subnet 2 so what we're going to do is we're going to look at subnet 2 over here subnet 2 range of addresses we can give is actually between this 10.65 to 10.94 so what we need to do is we go over here we're going to allocate the first address any addresses within the subnet and the same subnet mask okay 
So let's examine the next one. 0, 0, 0 for R2. So for R2, 0, 0, 0 is in the subnet 1. So let's take a look at our subnet 1. In this case, we have the subnet 1 range between 192.168.10.33 to 10.62. Okay, but we have already used up the 10.33 earlier. So let's use the next one. 192.168.10.34 and the subnet mask to be the same. Okay, and let's proceed to address the IP address for 0001 for R2. So R2, in this case, 001 is in subnet 4. So let's proceed to look at our subnet 4. In this case, subnet 4 is here. And the range of addresses we can give is actually this range of address between 129 and 158. So let's go over to here and let's give it maybe 192.168.10.129. Okay, so any addresses within the range and the subnet mask will be 255, same subnet mask and proceed to fill in the rest. Gigabit 01 for R3, R3 in this case is here, Gigabit 01 is in subnet 5, so let's proceed to look at subnet 5, subnet 5 the range of addresses between 161 to 190. So let's give it the 10.161 and the subnet mask will be the same. Okay, and for 0000, 0, 0, 0 for R3, R3 0, 0, 0 is in subnet 3. So what we need to do is we look at subnet 3. Again, subnet 3 we have used up the first one, 97. So we are going to use the next address, 98 instead. 92.168.10.98 and 255.255.255.224 for this address. For 0001, in this case 0001 of the R3 is in subnet 4. So subnet 4 is the range of address in over here between 129 and 158 so let's put it to 192.168.10.130 to 255.255.255.224 okay okay we are almost done for this long question over here so let's try to answer the last part part b for this question so the next part is we are going to fill in the IP addresses and subnet mask for the devices. Okay, so devices in this case we have our PC, our switches and so on. Okay, so let's try to allocate the addresses based on the subnet that we have already drawn up so far. So let's take a look at our PCA. In this case our PCA falls under serial subnet 0. So let's go on to our subnet 0 over top. So on the subnet 0, our range is between 192.168.10.1 to 10.30. So in order to avoid any confusion between the allocated addresses, let's use the last available address. So in this case, let's use 30 for the PC1, PCA. 192.168.10.30 for the PCA subnet mask is still the same oh. okay we'll leave the default gateway in a short while and PCB will be the next address 192.168.10.31 okay subnet mask is still the same the part on switch 1 okay so let's take a look at switch 1 so in this case our switch 1 also falls in the same subnet 0 so let's allocate an address over there for switch 1 VLAN 1 10 point 
oops I'm sorry this is not 31 should be 29 and this is 28 and the same subnet mask okay so that's done for PCA PCB and switch 1 we continue with PCC PCD and switch 2 so let's take a look at the diagram PCC PCD and switch 2 are in subnet 2 so let's take a look at our subnet 2 over here so for subnet 2 the range of addresses is between 10.65 to 10.94 so let's use the last address again for easier allocation 10.94 right 10.94 yes so let's use the last address 192.168.10.94 255 and the switch 2 is also in the same subnet 2 okay so let's use the next address 192.168.10.92 and 255.255.255.224 okay so that's done for PCC, PCD and, PC and S2 so let's take a look at the last three devices PCE, PCF and S3 so PCE, PCF and S3 are in subnet 5 so let's go on to subnet 5 over here so subnet 5 range of addresses is between 192.168.10.161 to 190 so let's use the last address for this PCE 192.168.10.190 subnet mask is the same 192.168.10.189 and the last S3 is 192.168.10. 188 255.255.255.224 okay so that is the IP addresses and some mask for the devices okay so let's take a look at the very last part on the default gateway for this subnet okay so in this case how do we define what we call the default gateway what exactly is our default gateway Okay, so we can see the default gateway better by looking at our network diagram. So in this case, this is our network diagram we have drawn earlier. So the default gateway is actually the device that we actually have in the center of the network. So in this case, let's look at the subnet 0. So for subnet 0, our default gateway is actually r1 why is that so if you look at this subnet 0 over here the entrance to the subnet 0 or the exit to the subnet 0 is actually r1 so r1 is acting as a gatekeeper for this subnet 0 okay so this r1 is the gatekeeper or sometimes the technical term is actually called the default gateway for this subnet okay so in this case r1 is the default gateway for this subnet and how do we know which interface do they actually exit in this case the default gateway for subnet 0 is this g01 over here okay so this is the default gateway the interface to exit from subnet 0 so let's go to the table earlier look for our G01 for R1 so R1 G01 is over here so our default gateway is actually this address over here 10.1 so this is our default gateway for the first subnet all of them have the same default gateway okay so let's examine the default gateway for PCC, PCD and S2 so for PCC, PCD and S2 the default gateway is through R2 and the 
interface is actually G01 also of R2. So let's take a look at our G01 of R2. In this case, G01 of R2 is actually this address over here, 192.168.10.65. So in this case, let's put this as our default gateway. And the last default gateway for PCE, PCF, and S3. PCE, PCF, and S3, default gateway is actually G01 for R3. So let's take a look at our G01 for R3. In this case, G01 for R3 is 10.161. So this is our default gateway address for the R3 subnet. So that's the answer for the IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway for the three subnets.